get the message this morning. It was a um, a um, preference uh, uh, precedent to this message tonight. The message tonight follows what we talked about this morning. This morning I talked about uh, the reality of hell. Subject we don't like to think about, but it's a Bible doctrine. I'd trust the Bible over your feelings if I was you. Uh, we don't like to think about it, but um, the Bible teaches Old Testament, New Testament, and everywhere in between about hell. Tonight, we're going to talk about you and I and the greatest work in the world. The greatest work you and me could possibly be involved in. Psalm 126, verse number 5 and 6. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Been sowing in tears lately? They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. You ain't going to have a whole lot of joy if you never have no tears. He that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing the sheaves with him. I'm preaching tonight just for a few minutes on the greatest work in the world. I mean that. When you talk about kings, congressmen, senators, ambassadors, president, the guy over there in England that runs them country, Japan, little Kim Jong, whatever his name is, and North Korea, all the men in the world that have what they call important, prominent positions, what I'm going to talk about tonight is the greatest work a person can be involved in. You already know what it is. It's bringing another person to the Lord Jesus Christ. When I talk to you tonight, this morning, about hell being real and forever and ever and ever, somebody name me one thing you could do better than keeping somebody out of that hell. Anything. If you got a cure for cancer tomorrow, it would not be as great as winning one soul. Now, I hope they do find a cure for cancer. I may have it right now and not know it. Millions of people have it. I, I'm not belittling that at all. But you're going to die anyway. Even if you got cancer, you die of something else. If you win one boy or girl to the Lord Jesus Christ, you have accomplished more than the men who put that spaceship on the moon and brought back a bag of rocks. We could have told them it was there to start with. If you win one person, one person to the Lord Jesus Christ and they go to heaven and miss hell, you have done a greater work than if you stood up and made peace in the whole world because everybody in the world is going to die anyway whether there's peace or not. So this evening, let's think about the greatest. Get, you, get our thinking clear like focus a camera. That's what I want you to do tonight. Number one, the worker's activity. The Bible said, he that goeth, he that goeth. Now, there's your key right there. You go, you're going to get somebody saved eventually. The problem with most people is they just won't go. You won't go. You make all kinds of excuses why that you won't go. Now, uh, you, some of you are already feeling a tad nervous. And the reason you feel a tad nervous is because that the Lord is dealing with you about going and trying to win somebody to the Lord. Don't fight off that conviction. Go, go. Now, the truth is tonight, uh, many of you men in here and some of you ladies like to fish. Um, Ethan there loves to fish. Him and Dennis, Dennis been taking him fishing and they went fishing last night and a couple, two or three times this week and, so, and they just like to fish. I, I don't care about fishing. You catch them, clean them, cook them, I'll eat them. But uh, I don't care about uh, just catching fish. But the truth is, there are some fishermen that are almost professional fishermen. I know I've met people that fish professionally for a living. And then there's what we call amateur fishermen. And then there's people who don't know what they're doing and throw it out there. And get one. But the truth is, if you go fishing enough times and throw it out there, you're going to catch a fish. Am I right? 
If you're not ever catching a fish, there's one reason for it. You're not fishing. Now the Lord said, come ye after me, and I'll make you become fishers of men. The truth is tonight, don't get mad at me tonight. I love y'all, and I'm going to tell you the truth. The truth is tonight, if you're not fishing, you're not following. He said, if you follow me, I'll make you to become fishers of men. You heard me right. If you're not fishing, you're not following. You know what the first thing a person wants to do when they really, really get right with God? They want to tell somebody else, usually it's a family member or somebody, and get them saved too, right? I mean, the very first thing you want to do when you get saved is see somebody else, mostly your family members, get saved. So he that goeth, he that goeth, he that goeth. The first two letters in God are go. The first two letters in gospel are go. You've got to go. You've got to go. Uh, before I get through tonight, some of y'all are going to think, well, Brother Danny's just getting on me. And no, 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 you got it all wrong. I'm trying to tell you what a privilege you have to go and tell the greatest story the world's ever heard. I mean, people dying without God, and me and you got the answer and the, the gospel for what they need, and it's our job to go and tell them. Now, the only way I know to go is just have a time and go. Set you a time and go. You say, well, I just witness at work. Good. Uh, you should. You say, well, I just witnessed to my family. Uh, good. And uh, please don't start this stuff if you just do all your witness on a computer. Please don't. I'm, I don't want to get in a bad mood, and it's wicked, and it's wrong to use that for an excuse. I, I have people tell me, say, I witnessed to the computer. That's good. I'm proud of you. Any chicken can sit beside, behind a a a keyboard, but you never will get a sinner face to face, show them the scripture, get them down and pray with them. That's what the Lord meant in Matthew 28 when he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, teaching them to obey whatever I've commanded you. You don't lead many people to the Lord on those books. Now, you might lead some, and I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not. It's, if you do it, do it. If you got one, use it for God. Hallelujah. But that is no substitute for going. That is no, are you listening to me? Now, I'm preaching the Bible to you tonight, and you've got you to gotta either take it uh, or, or, or get mad or whatever, but I'm, if you do, if you get, it's conviction dealing with it. Now, if I got up here tonight and I said, uh, I said you ought to pay your tithes, uh, I bless God, you ought to pay your tithes, uh, everybody who does that would say, yeah, amen, preacher, you're right, help yourself, Brother Danny. The only people it would bother are the ones that ain't doing it. Am I right? I mean, the way it don't bother you if you ain't doing it. If I got up here and I said, uh, uh, husbands, love your wives, y'all love... Now, if you're being mean to your wife, it's going to bother you. If I got up here and I said, uh, uh, treat people right and honest, and you cheat people all the time, it would bother you. Now, the reason it bothers you when I get on this subject of going... Can't you see that's the Holy Ghost dealing with you? Can't you see that God's working with you? But you've got, your, you've got it in your head that you don't do no wrong. Since you do other stuff, right? It, other people sin, but not what you don't do is a sin. Sin ain't just what you do. Sin is what we don't do. And when we refuse to obey the commandment of the Lord to go, we are sinning against God. You set you a time and you'll go. You know what you'll do? They'll say, all right, we're going fishing. I'll, I'll meet you so and so and morning, 6 o'clock, we're going to the lake and we're going fish. You set a time and you go. Now you have to do that with going and, and witnessing. You have to. If you don't, you'll just witness occasionally a casual witness and never be a consistent soul winner and a witness for God. The Lord said, go. He that goeth, he that goeth, he that goeth. Now you know when the last time I caught a fish? I don't even remember it. I don't remember the last time I went fishing. Uh, you say, well, uh, I don't even remember the last time I went on a soul preacher. When's the last time you went soul winning? When's the last time that you got a handful of tracks and went down the road you live on or at the flea market or at Walmart or somewhere and just, just walk up somebody and give it to them? Just walk up somebody and give it to them. When I first got saved, we did that all the time. Well, I didn't have a church. I didn't have a ministry. We didn't have buses. We didn't, I didn't even know about all this stuff. And me and 
these boys got on fire for God, and I wanted to witness so bad I couldn't stand it. And we got us a handful of tracks. We'd go over there at the truck stop in Nebo, there at exit 90. That's the only place that's open past 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening. And we'd go in there, and we'd sit down and witness the truck drivers. And we'd go to a town sometime. And we'd just go up to some people and say, Hey, here you are. Read this. This will tell you about your best friend. This will tell you about the Lord. I still do that to this day. I think if it's good enough to do when you first got saved, it's good enough to do after you've been saved a few years. A lot of preachers well, get on fire for God when they first get saved till they learn better and get all educated and big shot and nice car. And then they quit witnessing. That ain't right. They're backslid. The Lord said, go. He that goeth. He that goeth. He that goeth. He that goeth. It is a command. It's not an option. Do you feel a little bit guilt? Do you feel a little bit of uneasiness while I'm preaching on this? You're the one God's dealing with. We're going to have a big day on, on July the 8th all day long. Oh, we're going to have a time. Hallelujah. Oh, no, it ain't Dollywood. No, it's not. It's not. It's not uh, Six Flags. Oh, no. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with them play, but it's going to be better than that. We're going to have a big marathon and hit these streets and go find somebody that needs Jesus Christ and tell them the greatest story ever told. And everybody here could be involved in that. You could be. You can be. You ought to be. I'm telling you tonight, we need to go. All right, number two. Number two, the worker's field. The worker's field. It said, he that goeth forth. Goeth forth. Where are you going? Into the field. Into the garden. To the hospital. To the rest home. You know what people used to do? I know, I know people do this. I've done it myself lots of times. Get some tracks. Well, these are our little church cards, but I'm just going to imagine they're tracks. And you say, well, uh, now, and my buddy, uh, Jeremy, uh, he lives down there in Sh in, near Shelby or somewhere. I'll just say, I'm going to come down there Monday evening, and me and you will meet at 6 o'clock, and we go in the hospital. And we go in the hospital, and we look in there, and there's somebody laying in there. They're not in a coma or nothing. They're, their eyes are open. They ain't got no pictures on the wall. They ain't got no letters from family. And we just walk in there and say, hey, how you doing? I'm so-and-so. I'm from Shining Light Baptist Church in Morganton, and I I come to tell you about the dearest friend you ever had. You know what God will do? God will bless any effort that you put forth like that. Go in the hospital. Go in the rest home. These guys go in the rest home every other, every other morning up there. There's plenty of places. You know, that lady called me, and she said, we can't get nobody to preach in these rest homes. And I thought, Lord, where's all the preachers? I, I mean, there's thousands of them in Burke County. She said, you know what they want? They want to spotlight and the money. They don't want to preach. And they, they said, uh, 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 Y'all listen to me this evening. All right, now, we're just getting started. Uh, get, you, get you a handful of tracks. Hit them rest homes. Hit them hospitals. Go out. I know people that go to school. You kids that go to school, they won't let us come to school, but they can't stop you. You can be a witness at school. You can tell your friends about Jesus. You can tell them the greatest story ever told. You can be a witness. You can work in the field. Uh, you know, all of us know uh, 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 Dr. Jack Howes and the ministry he had all them years. And Do you know why Jack Howes was such a successful soul winner. He was so conscious. He, he, when he saw a group of people, he didn't see people. He saw souls. He saw eternity. R.A. Torrey did that. And, and any great soul winner, when you see a big crowd of people, you see eternity. And they're headed for hell. One time there's a man uh, had a, uh, died. It was really a dream, but he died. And he, he died and he went to heaven. And the, and the angel took him up there, and this angel said, Sir, I want you to look back down there on earth. And he looked back down there on earth, and he said, This is the way earth looks from heaven. And he saw multitudes of people, millions of people with blindfolds on like this. And they all were just marching like zombies, like this, falling off the cliff, falling into hell. And, all, and, and the, the guy looked up in heaven, and he said, Is that the way it looks from up here? And the angel said, Yes. And the angel said, do you want to stay here and enjoy heaven? Or do you want to go back down there and go to work for a while? He said, send me back down there. Let me go to work and reach some of them poor people for Jesus. He said, I'll never wish to be dead again. He went back down there and spent his life. Now, our problem is we don't see it like that. We see our neighbor get a new car. We see him get a nice house. We say, boy, they got it made. Boy, look at that. That's a nice family. They ain't. They are sorry, good for nothing. Uh, and we ought to see them. We ought to see them as souls. We ought to see them as sinners. We ought to see them as people. Amen? And look for open door. The, the field 
look, you know, God opens doors for us all the time to witness, and a lot of times we don't even know it. Me and Kelly was listening to a preacher on that preacher the other night about soul winning. He was talking about doors open. Look for doors. Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. Uh, I was working one time years ago in a cotton mill in Marion, and I worked, excuse me, I worked in a cotton mill, and up there, uh, that's right, you heard me, we're in a cotton mill. Preacher ain't too good to work in a cotton mill, and you ain't either. And I worked on a time clock and worked at a cotton mill, and I, I might wind up doing it again before it's over with. Uh, but anyway, uh, I went up there, and, I, and I, was, I was working one day, and I had this brush and my job was to brush out these looms and get the cotton out of them. And I had to do that about half a day. And I was in there and I was had the victory. I hadn't been saved very long. And this guy come in there and he said, you got it made, don't you? You know how people come out and see and say, you got it made? Anybody ever say that to you? You got it made, ain't you? And, you? and he expected me to say, Lord, no, I can't wait to get out of this blankety blank, blank, you know, like that. And I said, yep, sure do. And I just kept working like that. And he stood there for a minute and he said, what's the secret? Said, now, do you want a door open? There's one big enough you could drive a Mack truck through. And I said, I said, the secret is knowing the Lord and knowing your sins are forgiven. He said, oh, oh, okay. He went on. <laughs> That's an open door, brother. You know, if you'll pay attention, you'll pray up, God will open doors for you to witness. Man, it's fun. It's exciting. I've got on the elevator. I can't tell you the time. And I get on there and they'll say, which way are you going? Well, I mean, you don't have to ask somebody like me that. Which way? Which way? Well, I said, on this, I'm going to the third floor. Which way are you going when you leave this world? And give them a gospel track. That's right. Look for open doors like that. Look, look for, look for doors open. Uh, hey, oh, uh, Ruckman said the other night, this guy came up. You know how they always say, "How's it going, preacher?" You know, I'm sure if you witness a lot, they call you preacher at work. Anybody like that? You girls and boys at school. And he said, uh, guy came up to him and said, "How's it going, preacher?" He said, pretty good. How are you, Sander? <laughs> that ain't really the way he's supposed to do it. Uh, but uh, but uh, that's an open door. <laughs> that's an open door, amen? That's right, brother. Amen. Be soul conscious. Be soul conscious. He said, oh, R.A. Torrey one time, uh, he was at a restaurant. He was a, a soul winner back in the, in the 1800s. And, buddy, I'll tell you, he, he, he witnessed and he witnessed and he witnessed. And he saw this man come to wait on him, his waiter, at a table. And uh, Torrey looked at him and, and he said, the Spirit of God said, you better talk to him. And he said, no, Lord, you know, uh, Lord, I, I, I better not. He's working and he's busy. You know, how, you know how God tells you to witness and then you have 50 different reasons come why you shouldn't. Has everybody had that feeling? The first voice is the Lord saying, do it. And then here comes 100 reasons why you shouldn't. They're working. They're busy. It's not the right time. And he said, that guy come back in a minute and said, can I fill up your tea, tea glass here? And he said, yes, sir. And he said, the Lord said again, you need to witness that guy. You're the only one that might witness to him. He said, Lord, he's working. It's not right to take his time from his employer. And he hum around there and didn't do it. And he paid the bill, paid the bill up front. He said, the Lord said, you better witness that guy. And you say, the Lord never tells me to witness. You're so far away from God, you can't even hear him. Get your eye right. Say, God made me soul conscious. Why did you used to be soul conscious and you're not now? I'm telling you, God's still God that he was the night he saved you. God's still God as in the night he was when you was on fire and I was on fire. He's still God. He don't change. And he said that night he went and left and he said it started bothering him. He went back later on that evening. He said, I'm going to go back and talk to that guy. And he went back and he said, where's that waiter who's working on tables this evening? And they said at about 4 o'clock this evening, that man had a lot of problems and everything. He took a pistol and went in the restroom and blew his brains out. And R.A. Torrey knew that God had told him to talk to that man. And it has your last opportunity. Look for doors open. I'll never forget one night. I, I, I was on fire for the Lord. And, and I made a lot of mistakes. I said a lot of things I shouldn't say. But i tell you one thing. 
God will forgive you if your heart's right. And I remember one time I was in Kentucky Fried Chicken in Marion. And it was in the middle of the winter, and it got dark about 5.30. And I, got, I was getting ready to go to church that night. And for some reason, I was by myself, went over at Kentucky Fried Chicken, the old Kentucky Fried Chicken on the lower side of Marion when it used to be over now. I think it's a spaghetti place or something now. And, uh, and, they, and I was in there, and it was, uh, it was dark, dark. And a big old thunder and lightning storm, it was going boom, boom outside. I mean bad. And there's about 10 people in there eating, and I was just finishing up, getting ready to leave. And all of a sudden, the lightning went, bam, and knocked the power out all the way down the street. It got pitch black dark in that place. I mean, you couldn't see your hand. You know how it's been light, and all of a sudden it's real dark, can't see nothing? And everybody in there went, ah! And then it got quiet, like, and I stood up and grabbed my stuff, and I said, remember, it's going to be just that quick when Jesus comes. And I just turned around and walked out the door. Left them sitting in there. I've always wondered what them people done when they're sitting there in the pitch dark. Remember, it'll be that quick. When... Lordy mercy, I bet. I bet somebody had nightmare. That's fun, man. That's fun. We used to do that. Go in McDonald's. We, these guys that said, I dare you to get up there. We sung songs in restaurants. Uh, and they, they said, well, don't they throw you out? Well, it, it, it's happened before. Uh, 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 but I tell you, we've had a great time being a witness. Amen. Being a witness for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, I'll never forget one time we went to Myrtle Beach. And I, we went to Myrtle Beach to preach. That's the only reason we went to preach, give out tracts and building, because we knew that Myrtle Beach was the wickedest place this side of hell. Amen. And, buddy, I mean, uh, I'd never been nowhere that bad in my life, never seen nothing like that. So we said we're going to go down there and preach. Me and about four guys, we had this van. We had no money, couldn't stay in no motel. We slept in the van, put all our money together, bought a little bit of food. We'd eat at them crystal. You ever eat a crystal burger? Well, a little bit of square hamburgers about that big. And uh, that's what we eat, crystal burgers. And, boy, we went out there on the, and, and preached on the street, and I preached in front of the old pavilion. If you used to go to the beach years ago, they had the old pavilion out there. And I remember standing out there that day, and I opened my Bible... That shirt and a tie on. I mean, people walking by cussing, half drunk and everything. And I said, uh, pray for me, y'all. Pray for me. I'm going to do this. It's good to be here tonight. And people looked at me like, who in the world? And you know what I thought? I thought, if you can come out here looking like that, I got enough guts to come out here and do this. And y'all look like an elephant with a diaper on. And I said, I, got there and I took my Bible and I said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And people stop and turn. And you know, there's 10,000 people walking down that street. I said, the Bible said, it's upon a man wants to die, but after this, the judge. And some of them stopped and started listening. And when they stopped, it backed up the crowd, backed up the crowd. I bet you there's 500 people crowded around me. Listen to me. And I got more and more bold. And first thing I know, I was preaching just like I do in here. The Word of God says we're going to die and face God. And I mean, I preached and preached. And when I got through, there's four teenagers, two boys and two girls. I guess there's 18 or 19. They come up and they just stood around. And we give them tracts and started talking to them. And I said, are y'all Christians? They said, no. And one of them punched the other one and said, he's the real deal. Guy's real. I said, I am. I am real. I may not be much, but I am real. And I'm going to tell you all tonight, it's been a long time since then, but I'm still real. I mean everything I say up here. I mean it. I ain't the best preacher in the world, but i tell you one thing, brother. What you see is what you get. I mean what I'm saying. And I believe what I'm saying. And I'm telling you, I went uh, and we started pre witnessing to them. And I said, we're going to go eat something. Y'all want to go with us? And they followed us to the steakhouse out of that big crowd. And we led them to the Lord in a van. And they got saved, all four of them, and went and eat with us at the steakhouse. And we sat there and fed them just like little birds opening their mouth. We was feeding them scripture the whole time we was eating. I'm telling you, brother, that was more fun than riding a slingshot ever thought about being. You say, how do you know? I'm guessing. I ain't riding no slingshot. Uh, you, 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 that's crazy people stuff. I mean, I'll, I will ride a roller coaster, and I will ride a, I ain't getting on no stupid slingshot. I mean, I might, that, that stake would, might be on the other side of the 
road over there and me on this side. Uh, if I rode that thing. I'm telling you tonight, the workers feel. The workers feel. The workers feel. People are everywhere that need to be saved. Listen, bus workers, that big day on the 8th, we're going to get out that morning. Glory to God. I can't hardly wait. I mean, we're, I, want, I want some help on every single bus route. We're going to say, we're going that way. You take that trailer park. We'll take them apartments. And we're going to go get kids to ride them buses. And the going come in here Sunday morning and somebody get up preach the devil out of them and get them saved. Listen, the field is the whole world. You ought to be a part of that. The worker's zeal, he that goeth forth and weeping, weeping. You know, they're not impressed with our education. They're not impressed with our Bible knowledge. But when people see you crying over them, I'm telling you, they, yeah, that gets a hold of people's heart. The spirit in which we preach and witness is just as important as what we say. The spirit we do it in. It ain't just words. I begged this morning the Lord to come on the scene this morning, and he did. The Lord was in here this morning. That was God in here this morning, y'all. That was God's power. I can't tell you how many people said the Lord done something this morning. That's zeal, brother. It's zeal. It's enthusiasm. That's what zeal is. When they see our tears. They, they said uh, uh, to William Booth years ago, with General William Booth who started the Salvation Army, he was witnessing to this atheist and telling him about hell. And listen what he said. All Christians listen. That atheist told General William Booth, he said, if I believed what you Christians say you believe, I'd crawl across England on my hands and knees on broke glass if it meant one person being saved. He said, if I really believed what you people say you believe, you really believe that people are going to burn forever, he said, I'd crawl across England on my hands and knees for one person to be saved. Let me ask you something. Do you really believe this stuff? Do you honestly believe it? Throw your Bible aside and not even read it for days at a time. And don't you, uh, is, is something wrong with you? That man told us, that missionary the other day, tore my heart out when he talked about those kids in Africa sitting on that pile of rock, beating them all day long just to eat. And God's been good to us here in this country. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about all of us. All you men, listen, I don't mean to be ugly, but it's a disgrace that 90% of the people who get bus ministry is women. Where in the world are you men? Where are y'all? I mean, good night, people. Don't, you know, oh, somebody else will do it. That's what everybody thinks. That's why you park buses. That's why the bus route dies. That's why, because everybody thinks somebody else will do it. And you ought to appreciate me telling you the truth here tonight. I'm going to bat for them little boys and girls. They ain't got nobody to care about them if a bus don't go get them. You ought to say, thank God, preacher. I'm glad you care about them. The worker's tools. If you really believe what we're saying tonight, we'd be standing in line. Want to do something for God. The worker's tools, bearing precious seed. God never commands us to do something that he don't equip us to do. Cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. It'll get the job done. You know what you do? You use that sword. The tool is a sword. People say, well, I went over and I talked to him and I talked to him and I think I can win him. You use the word of God to win people. That's your sword right there. The word of God. You know what God's promised to bless? His word. Not your arguments, not your intellect, not your charming personality. All that may be okay, but God uses his word. Stab them with the word of God. If you can't win them, leave them bleeding. Spiritually speaking, you know, wham! One time he was at the flea market. 
Years ago, we used to preach flea market every Saturday morning, every Saturday. Ten or 15 preachers meet over at flea market in Marion. They don't allow that no more. They, they will stop you from doing it now, but we used to get over, every, and they had a van, and one would preach, and they'd get out, and another preach, get out. I got up and preached one Saturday morning, just like I am in here. I, I had a platform on top of the van, about that high on top of it, plywood. I got a picture of it at home. Got Carrie standing out, out beside it. She's about four years old, and, and I used to stand on top of that van, stomp my feet. We got put in the newspaper over in Johnson City, Tennessee, we used to go from town. Hey, we had a time. Some of the best times I ever had in my life with a bunch of guys, just a bunch of guys out. Lord, we went to Gatlinburg and went to Johnson City. We stopped over at the river and had a foot washing, brother. Hey, Amen. We did. That's right. And we did. <laughs> and I don't get don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. Uh, we don't. We're not going to do that tonight. Uh, uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but we had a foot washing in the river. It said, there it is in the Bible. Let's do it. I mean, we healed people, tried to raise them from the dead and everything else. Hey, my buddy, I'm telling you, we preached and we preached and we preached. And I was at the flea market preaching one day and there was a scantily clad female, which means a woman that hardly had nothing on, come up and she said, I can't believe what you're doing out here. She didn't hardly have nothing on. And I said, well, ma'am, we're just trying to serve God and do what he wants to and everything. She said, well, you're not supposed to judge people and holler and scream. I said, ma'am, we're just trying to serve God and all that. And she just kept on and on at me. And I, when I was 23 or 4, I had a little tad less patience than what I got now. I, I can be in a long way with people now. If I didn't, I'd knock some of you. Uh, 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 but back then, i just kidding. Back then, I'd had a temper. I'd, I'd get mad like that, just fire shoot through me. And some stuff happened that broke me of that. And I don't do that no more. And, and I mean, I had a temper. And she kept on and on running her mouth, saying, well, you shouldn't be out here. She said, you're, you're pre, you're, that's immodest. And I looked back at her and I said, lady, you're the one that don't know what modest is. And she went, oh. and I just turned around and walked off. Just, yeah! Yeah. Left her bleeding, brother. I didn't want to hear that mouth no more. I probably shouldn't have said that. Maybe I should have. I don't know. I don't know. But I guarantee you one thing. She didn't forget that. that but I, I, didn't, I couldn't keep back my sword from blood. That, that wasn't right. Sometimes, sometimes you have a bad attitude. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing, brother. The worker's tools is the Word of God. The Word of God. The worker's promise. Doubtless come again. Doubtless come again. Doubtless come again. Does this bother you? It only bothers you if you're a little bit under conviction. If you're a little bit under conviction. I'll never forget of going night after night one time. A lady asked me, said, Brother Danny, you need to go visit this lady. I, I, I forget her name. I think her name was Kathy. I don't remember her last name. It was a long time ago, 30, over 30 years ago. They said, she's really under conviction, and, and she's, she needs to get saved. I said, okay, where she live? I got my Bible, and me and somebody went over to her house and knocked on the door. She came to the door, and I said, are you Kathy? And she said, yes, I am. I said, I'm Danny Castle. She said, I don't know who you are. So I, and I said, okay. We went in, started talking to her. And that woman was so scared. The Lord had been dealing with her and already gone ahead of us and worked with her. And she, she had been, she drove to work in Marion, and she said she drove around the block and up there to keep from passing by the church. She said, I can't drive by that place. She said, every time I drive by, and that's the Lord just pulling on her. I believe there's thousands of people drove by there, and the Lord said, you sorry, good for nothing thing. You need to get in here and get saved. Ah, turn the radio up. And she said, I can't even drive by there. I said, Kathy, it ain't the church. That's the Lord dealing with you. And I led her to the Lord right there in her house and prayed with her. She got saved. One night at the truck stop or at the flea market over there, I wasn't just this boy. He's about 18 years old. He had long hair down here like a girl. And I talked to him. I said, how's it going, man? Let me give you something to read. He said, thank you. And had a British accent. And I can't, I can't do that. I don't know how they, I can, I can tell it when I hear it, but I can't talk no British accent. You'd laugh if you tried to hear me try to talk British. And his name was Buddy. I said, Buddy, are you a Christian? He said, no. 
and me and him sat down on the back of a truck. Somebody had a truck there, and we sat down on the tailgate, and I took the Bible, and I said, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says. And I said, buddy, you believe that? And he said, yes, sir. And I said, well, you, if I prayed with you, would you pray with me right now? And we bowed our heads, and he prayed, and he got saved right there. You say, now, Brother Danny, out there at the flea market? Yeah. It don't have to be in a church building. People get saved where you work. People get saved down the street from your house. People can get saved. You say, well, how do you know they really mean it? Well, if you don't never try, they ain't none of them going to get saved. If one out of ten does, it's better than none. They said, old Carl Lackey had a meeting up there at his church, had about a hundred saved, and, and he went out and said a hundred people got saved. And one preacher met him and said, now, Carl, do you believe all hundred of them really got saved? He said, they probably didn't. you believe that two at your church last year got saved? You don't know. If you have a hundred people made profession, of course all of them probably don't get saved. Nobody knows that. But I'll tell you one thing, brother. A, a, a bunch, they said that about the revival I got saved in, and I got saved. It was real. It was real. All y'all that work in the junior church back there, work with them kids. Ah, oh, them little old kids don't listen. Listen, there might be one little old toehead sitting back there that you may not pay a bit of attention to. Let's listen to every word you say. And God might have his hand on them to do a great and mighty work. Don't underestimate the Lord. The worker's joy come again. The worker's reward bringing his sheaves with them. I can thank God tonight. Right down the road there in Hickory tonight. Brother Gene preaching right now. And every person that gets saved in his church and every missionary that they support and every bus that they run, I get dividends off of that. I was preaching when Gene got saved. Everybody he wins the Lord is my grandkids in the Lord. If you give a missionary some money, we, that missionary that we had here the other day, they're going back to Ghana, Africa. They're going to build a orphanage, and they're going to get them kids. For $150, you get one kid. And we gave them an offering, and, and a man in the church gave them a very, very, very nice offering. And you know what? Every penny of every person that ain't why we do it but every person that gets saved as a result of that we get some of the blessings that when we get to heaven it'll all come back in it'll all come back in Sam Bellini's down there preaching tonight and hidden night my cousin when he, I remember when he got right got right with God at youth camp Sam started carrying his Bible to the public high school carried his Bible every day up there to McDowell High School 10th, 11th, 12th grade Every day, public school. Laid it right there on his desk. They laughed at him, made fun of him. He's been over our pastor of the church nearly 20 years and winning souls, supporting missionaries, running buses. <laughs> Hallelujah! We get a kickback off of that. Blessings. You know what I believe? I believe God looks down from heaven sometimes and he says, hmm, they're trying. Watches that bus go down that road. He watches them bus workers knock on that door. I was out there yesterday. Me and Dennis went down here to Hickory. I really wish some of you men would get your heart right and help. I really do. I mean, it would mean a lot to me. We was down there yesterday, and I felt sweat running down my back. You know, your shirt is off your body a little bit, and I could just feel it running right down. And I thought, Lord, I'm going to have wet spots on my pants. And then I thought, you know what? When I talked to that old man that said he's seen people get blowed up in Vietnam, and I talked to old Dante, who was drunk. And I gave him a dollar. I shouldn't have done that. But, man, I, I want him to come to church today. And he came. He was here this morning. Y'all saw him sit right over on the front row. I believe the Lord looks down and he sees that. And he says, you know what? You concern yourself with what I'm concerned about. And I'll work this other stuff out in your life that you think that you need to be working on. See, we got it all wrong. We think, well, I need to do this, I need to do that, I got to do this, I got to do that. You get concerned about what God's concerned about, and he'll take care of what you can't do. That ain't why you do it, but he, he'll do it. He, it works. You'll come again rejoice and bring your sheaves with you. There is no greater joy besides getting saved yourself than influencing somebody else. And they come to church and they get saved. It, you bus workers, isn't it a thrill when you pull up and you see them come running out the door? 
and get on that bus. Glory to God, you think, whoo! It wasn't all in vain. There's nothing like it. I'm going to ask you a question this, this evening. You want to get in the greatest work in the world? I know our church is different because we're all spread out. We live a long way from here. You can witness in your own community. They ain't going to use that for an excuse. Please, please. God, don't buy them baloney excuses like you make. Saturday's my only day off. So what? I don't have no days off. Go in the evening. Go at night. Go at work. Go at school. But you set you a time. And you say, I'm going to go and I'm going to witness somebody. I'm going to do it. By God's grace. Now, if, if we go get ice cream tonight and I see somebody there, I witness to them. I do. You witness some of the time, all the time. But you witness all the time, some of the time. And I set aside a time and I say, I ain't going to do nothing but witness that time. That's what Howe said. You witness some of the time, all the time. And all the time, some of the time. Do you understand that? That means you witness all the time. Store, grocery store, hospital, wherever. And then you set aside a time where you don't do nothing but witness. Just like you watch. So let's watch that movie tonight, honey. Okay, let's go soul winning tonight, honey. Let's go knock on somebody's door. You watch God bless it. Let's stand. Let's stand. We're coming to get a song tonight. Every head bowed and every eyes closed.